Welcome to worship. It is a beautiful fall day today. The leaves are changing and I thought it appropriate to be in front of some changing leaves because things are changing for us at Silverdale Lutheran. As many of you know, today is my last Sunday and it is bittersweet indeed. I love all of you so very much and we have had an amazing decade together. Today we hear from Paul's letter to the Philippians where he encourages them to rejoice, to know God's peace in their hearts, and to know God is right there beside them. And that's what we cling to today and in all times, that no matter what, we have God right here beside us, making us new, bringing us along, welcoming us to his joy. So welcome to worship today. I'm back here on my front stoop today as I was the first time I filmed for our online worship service, thinking with the green wreath behind me and the hope of spring that I, we would only be doing this for a few weeks. Now here we are with the fall wreath and with an uncertain future as far as what the COVID pandemic will bring. And so we fall on our knees and confess to a God who's rich in mercy and whose promises do not fail us. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Amen. And thanks be to God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. throughout the world for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word let us pray Gracious Lord, we rejoice today in you. We thank you for the many gifts you have given this church. We trust that you have our future in hand. We ask that the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, would guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Jesus. This is a story about what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like a king who had a big wedding party for his son. Son, I am hosting you a huge wedding party. Really? Yay! Servants, I have called you because I need you to go out, find some people, and invite them to my son's party. Okay. Ding dong. Oh, hello. What do you guys want? We were wondering if you would want to come to the king's son's wedding party. I'm not going to some party. I am already going to my farm. Bing, bing. Hi, what do you want? Do you want to come to the king's son's wedding party? What? No. Ring dong. The neighbor next door told me, no, I am joining my other neighbor on her farm.
We return with bad news. None of them accepted the party request. Why, that is bad news. I shall send you again, and you shall bring every person that you can find and invite them to my son's party and tell them that I have lots of good food and everything is ready and that it's going to be a really fun party. Wait, everyone, even the people who are on the streets, even the people who aren't good? Yes, everyone, even the people on the streets, even the people who aren't good. Don't you just hate being poor? Yes, I do so much. Hi, uh, hi. Would you like to come to the king's son's wedding party? There's lots of good food, everything is ready, and it's going to be a great party. Sure, we would love to come. Hi. Hi. Would you like to come to the king's son's wedding party? We have lots of food, everything is ready, and it's going to be a great party. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Do, 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 do. Hi. Hi. Would you like to come to the king's son's wedding party? Sure. The party night. Welcome to the party. You can have all of the food you want. It's on this table. And have fun. You need to be wearing this robe. I'm not wearing the king's stupid robe. But the king's no. said... Then leave or else. Huh. Everyone had a great party. Well, everyone else. A reading from the book of the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you do ye. And I urge Sinchi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help those women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, 
but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited are not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all of whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of the Lord. Well, it's here my last sermon at SLC, and it's fit, fitting that the lesson from Philippians showed up as it is some of Paul's last words to that church in Philippi. This is tough, and I'm glad it's tough because that means we loved each other well. You all have overwhelmed me these past weeks with your honesty, your faithfulness, your well wishes, your sadness, and I feel the same way, so many feelings, so bittersweet. I trust that God is calling me to a new place, but that doesn't mean it's not really, really hard. I've been finding myself thinking about some of the words Paul uses in Philippians, specifically joy, prayer, thanksgiving, and peace. And as we share together today, I'm going to use those words to shape my words. And I'm going to share some stories of our years together at Silverdale Lutheran Church. Prayer. Paul writes, Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. We've done a lot of praying together. One of my all-time favorite prayer stories happened at a ladies' night out quite a few years back. We were meeting at Hale's in the mall. Remember that place? It's now Moctezuma's, I think. And Hale's was going to be closing. And one of the women, Julie, asked our waiter how he was going to be faring when the restaurant closed. He shared with us that he was nervous and didn't have a job yet, and Julie, God bless her, just blurted out, can we pray for you? Now, I was one of those kids who would get embarrassed when we had to pray at a restaurant, so my parents finally stopped because all of us kids were so mortified, but Julie told me, sometimes I just get this feeling that I need to pray and I've stopped putting it off. I just pray right then and there. And I have to say that young man looked so grateful. Surprised too, but mostly grateful as all of us women put our hands up and Julie grabbed his hand, double checked his name tag, and then prayed for him that he would find work, that he would know and be okay. And it was a beautiful moment of prayer. I think of all the drives around Kitsap County, the ladies night out group has made to put our hands on the walls of schools of hospitals, of police and fire stations, of Costco and other businesses, surrounding our community with prayer at the beginning of each school year. I think of the prayer team, faithfully coming each month to lift up your joys, your sorrows, your prayers for your families and your children as you gathered at the altar rails to bear your souls to the God who has promised to be right beside us, listening to our prayers, inviting us to bring it all to him. 
As Paul writes, we have struggled beside each other as we have brought it all to God. As I've had a chance to say goodbye to some of you, I wish all of you, I have been so moved by your prayers for me. You've said, Pastor Paula, can we pray for you? And then you have lifted me right up, asking God to bless me in a new call and knowing God will continue to bless SLC just like God always does. It fills me with thankfulness for the silliness. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with me dressing as Marshawn Lynch, AKA priest mode every Super Bowl Sunday. I especially want to thank all of you who could care less about the Super Bowl, barely knowing that it was even happening, but you were such good sports. I'm so thankful for colleagues and an amazing staff that has been so up for anything. I doubt Bruce thought choreography would be a part of his job description, and yet he's always game to try it, dancing to whatever song PJ or I would reword and make, oh, so much worse. When Paul starts out this reading, he thanks those who have worked beside him, two women, Euhodia and Syntyche, and Clement and the others. I'm so thankful for Bill and Jonathan. What amazing and caring pastors they are, faithful Jesus lovers who are so good at what they do. What a joy it has been to work with them. Speaking of joy, <laughs> SLC is such a joyful place. I remember an annual meeting where the pastors left the room as you talked about salary and the guidelines were going up for us and what that would mean. Apparently everyone voted for the pay raise, but when we came back in, Evan greeted each one of us with a pink slip. You know, just to keep us humble. Oh, we laughed at that, didn't we? One story I had forgotten about until recently happened out at family camp. So there was a group of women who would train for triathlons called the Tribabes, remember them? And they would do their swims on Saturday mornings, their coach cheering them on with a bullhorn, a very loud bullhorn. When I first came, family camp didn't have too many participants and we were trying to get it going again. And so the little group of us had gathered for devotions before breakfast on Saturday morning. And the coach of the tribabes kept breaking into our devotion with cheers of, Swim faster! The devil is right behind you! <laughs> I'm not sure if I was able to fit that into my devotion or not, but oh, we laughed at that. I think of the baptisms. What a joy. The last one I did was on our February women's retreat. A friend of one of the women had attended, and before our final worship service, she told me she'd never been baptized. She was so nervous. She's 70 years old. She felt bad, but she wanted it so much. And as we surrounded her and she bowed her head over the bowl of water we had on the table, and I baptized her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, she just shook weeping and laughing and all of us were so blessed by that moment. I love the word joy that Paul just peppers the book of Philippians with because the word is different from the word for happiness. It isn't just putting on a happy face and being optimistic that the sun will come out tomorrow. Joy always comes out of pain for Paul. It takes pain seriously and proclaims that death will not have the final say, that we can trust in God, that God will take hard things and make them new, make us new. Joy is kind of like laughter through tears. It's a deep and it's abiding and it's a gift. I think of all of you who I have had the blessing of bringing communion to in your homes or the hospital. One couple, the wife had a stroke and for the last 13 years of her life couldn't walk or speak, but she understood everything. 
And as we shared the meal, her husband would lovingly hold her hand and tears would stream down her cheeks as she heard, this is the body of Christ for you, Francis. This is the blood of Christ for you. What joy, hard but joyful those times were. Paul writes, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love that beautiful image of the peace in our hearts being guarded by Jesus. I think of how all of you show up for each other in countless ways, calling during a pandemic, being the most generous church I have ever been a part of. I think of how you show up at Holy Week at SLC and how it's practically standing room only on Good Friday because you know Easter isn't as special if you don't go through Good Friday. I think of how we are a church with so many different opinions on politics, on the Bible, and how when we study together at MANA or the adult classes that are full of you all or the classes with the kids in Sunday school and youth group, you're hungering and thirsting to learn about God and faith. And I love how you ask questions and share your opinions and have taught me so much. There are so many more stories I could tell. Truly, I will treasure them as I treasure you all from the bottom of my heart. Paul writes, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Beloved people of SLC, this is what I know to be true, that God is right here, right now with us, that God has amazing plans for this church to be a light in Kitsap, to share the good news of the totally free gift we have been given of life with Jesus, not based on anything we've done or earned, but purely based on the righteousness of Christ. God will do something new here, and it will be wonderful to behold. So I say to you what Paul said to the church in Philippi. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen. And the God of peace will be with you all. I send my love to you. Amen.
With the gift of the Holy Spirit, we join together now in confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of the people today, I'm going to guide your prayers by mentioning areas of need in our world, letting you fill in the specifics. So I'll lift up an area and then there will be a short time of silence for you to add your prayer. So let us pray now with the promise of God's hearing and attentiveness to our prayers and pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, we pray for our world and all suffering from war, violence, persecution, and hunger. Lord, in your mercy, for our nation and our coming election, for all those who serve in, as elected officials, Lord, in your mercy, for the church in this time of crisis and COVID-19 struggles, Lord, in your mercy, for those suffering from Hurricane Delta and all storms, floods, and fires, Lord, in your mercy, for all those serving in the military and for all peace officers. Lord, in your mercy, God, for our schools and our homes, for students, parents, teachers, helpers, bus drivers, and administrators. Lord, in your mercy, for all broken relationships and families and friends, for healing and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for all those people who are in particular need of your care and grace this day, many in our congregation who are in the hospital, who can't see loved ones. And so we bring all those people to you now in this time, in this moment of quiet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other things we offer you, to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Blessings to you this day. We seek to up our connection with you during this time of physical distancing and would like to invite you to fill out an SLC Connect card and we'll have that card appear now for you. You can scan this QR code with your phone and it'll take you to this card, or you can go to our website at silverdalelutheran.org slash connect dash card. We'd love to hear from you. Um, our in-person worship and sign up uh, QR code will now come up 
We're asking folks to register. As you know, we're going indoors next year, and next year, next week. Instead of our park and praise service outside, we'll be inside for a limited number, and there's lots more information online about that. But we will be live streaming the service, so there'll still be a worship video for you. I want you to know that. Um, we're also letting folks know that if you want to come to our parking lot, um, stream the service on your device. We'll have Wi-Fi available and also we'll do the FM transmitter so you can listen in your car and we'll even bring communion out to people from the table as we worship together. So that will be an option for you as well, but you'll of course be able to watch the service from home live at 10 a.m. on Sunday next week or um, you can watch it thereafter as it will be recorded on the YouTube channel. Um, we also have the QR code available here for our Sunday School if you haven't got connected with that. So now in our service today, we have a very important sending and blessing for Pastor Paula as she finishes her call at SLC. Pastor Paula, as you leave our community of faith at Silverdale Lutheran Church, we wish to bid you a fond farewell. <laughs> and so we hear from God's word. First, a reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. And again from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, am with you. And finally, from John, from the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Paula, we have been a great team, mm -hmm. and we, we still are. Um, we're still <laughs> in ministry together, just in different contexts. We received you with great joy in word and sacrament ministry when you came to us so many years ago. And in this community, you have come to know and share God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us mm -hmm. through your ministry and just who you are. So let us pray. Eternal God. We thank you for Pastor Paula and for the time we have shared with her as she has been a blessing to us. So now send her forth to Vinland Lutheran to be a blessing to them in word and sacrament proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we do give thanks for Paula this day. Um, we bless you, Paula. Mm -hmm. Everybody, our hearts are with you. And like I say, we're just doing ministry in different contexts now. <laughs> um, and we do pray and send you with our richest and um, most heartfelt thanks and blessing. Amen. Three. Did you hear Midland Lutheran's God a call? She felt it early. 
prophesied that someday she would rise up. up and she would tell God's story and now she'll lead a congregation sharing Jesus' glory. Rise up. If you are able, please stand and lift up your hands. Give a blessing on her pastor. She can rise up. Understand? We know all know that she will rise up. Rise up. Here she goes. Here's Here. Paula Burcha. Members of the congregation. Here's Paula Burcha. Here's what you've been waiting for. Here's Paula Burcha. Just a millisecond, lay down some things and tell this pastor how we feel a second. How she's the model of a modern pastor for us all. The undisputed Dakotian mastermind whose message will inspire us. From BBS to Sunday school, passing faith on to every kid. A servant's heart that's elegant and so all red. But when time is tight, you can't assume that Paul is coming out with this snappy sorry skit that's like boom! Pastoral care, communion flowing. She still keeps on going when the COVID keeps growing, grace bestowing. She puts a stop to the groaning with the words of our Savior. Bless to bless, profess. To bring the fun. Oh. Oh. She likes the plan. Oh. Oh. She gets it done. She goes first hand. Yep, yep, yep. And she got to go with faith in God's plan. Hey, on the Holy Spirit, on the right woman. Up going. Up going. Up going. Up going. Woo. Woo. Sorry, guys. No fireworks in phase two. a little painful, but sister, we're going to miss you. Although, right now, it's time to get on that horse and ride to the north. Peace out, Pastor Paul. Bye-bye. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Merciful Father, everything on, in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ Jesus our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God are ready for the people of God.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love to one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we give thanks that our Eucharistic ministers are taking the elements, the same gifts that we've received here from our altar, um, out to the congregation. And so let us say a prayer for them as well. Gracious God, thank you for our Eucharistic ministers. Let them be a blessing to those who receive these gifts from our altar and from our worship. Uh, Keep them connected to you and your forgiveness and grace in this sacrament and keep us all connected to one another as indeed your body. And in your name we pray, amen. Be sent forth then today with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.